for Bandit 2. Let's get out of Bandit 1. If all of this is really below your skill level, by the way, um, you know, fear not. <laughs> Bandit gets a little more complex here pretty quick. Uh, obviously, or, you know, this is all Linux admin stuff. And so if you're, you know, the super awesome graybeard Linux admin, um, maybe all of it's below you, but maybe it's being used in ways that you're not used to um, or haven't seen before. So um, I completely understand if you're getting bored now, but we will we will venture into deeper waters shortly. Uh, so Bandit 2, uh, let's go ahead and take a look around, see what we got. Spaces in this file name. Well, this one's easy because we already had this other um, we already had this other example that I made when we were exploring. And this is one of the reasons why exploring a concept is is pretty pretty good in CTFs and uh, you know other other war games is because the more you understand something that's happening early, um, CTFs and war games often build on themselves. So if you understand a concept fully before moving on, then the next one that you know builds off of the previous question is going to be much easier and something you kind of already know. So we're like, hey, what about spaces? Well, we figured out spaces. So we'll just go ahead and spaces, oops, if I can type, in this file name. Boom. So there's our, there's our password. Now, maybe a couple other ways that we can do. Um, if we cat, let's try putting all these in quotes. Maybe this will work. Uh, whoop, what happened? No. Um, okay. Evidently, uh, like shift, like control panel shift a or something just like closes a window. And that's kind of cool. So we'll, uh, I hope do we, okay, we do still have that. So we're going to search bandit dot. Was the labs over the wire dot org l and we're in bandit two I think nope or were we in bandit three oh we were in bandit two cool so um, oh yeah we were seeing if we could uh, cat um, instead of doing it let's see if we can do the the explicit um, the explicit uh, definition of the path. There we go. So when it was saying, hey, by the way, uh, we don't know what that is, um, it's another... Ooh. What? Why are you being weird? I must have mistyped this earlier. Um, so anyways, uh, quotes work. Um, what else would work? Uh, what about... Does everybody know about tab complete everybody should know about tab complete if there's one thing you should know about linux and or windows and or most uh modern shells it's that tab complete is amazing and each shell will behave slightly differently the way bash works is that it will take you if you hit tab it will take you up till the end of when the file name is ambiguous so let's say that we had uh, three files. One that was spaces in this file name, another one was spaces, and another one was space. If we type SPA, uh, let's get out the other shell uh, to show this. So we're going to uh, touch uh, spaces in this file name. We're going to touch spaces, and we're going to touch space. And all touch does is it just creates a file. Uh, there's nothing in the file. Um, it just creates it. it. It touches it. If the file already exists, it'll update its access time. Uh, but that's, you know, that's it. So if we want to cat and we type SPA and we hit tab, it will bring us up to spaces because now, or space, because now it's ambiguous. Uh, it could be space. It could be spaces. It could be spaces in this file name. Um, so if we put an S there, now it's less ambiguous. Now it could be spaces or spaces in this file name. But if we hit tab again, 
uh, it still, it's still ambiguous. It could stop here, it could keep going. If we put the space in, then it's no longer ambiguous and it knows exactly what we want. We hit tab, there's nothing else that could be uh, what this is. It could, there's nothing called spaces, space, anything, so it knows. Um, if you do this uh, and you hit tab twice, it'll actually show you all of the different um, all of the different options that you have. So if we want to like um, cat user bin, is there anything in bin? Yes. So it'll say, it'll be like, hey, there's a lot of stuff here. Are you sure you want to do this? We'll say no, that's too many. But if we say A, how many A's? Okay. Uh, and then we can do like A, D, and then it adds the other D for us. What else do we have? Um, we can add a P, and then it'll auto type add part for us. We could do an R and it'll auto complete add or line add or to line for you. Um, the whole point of this is is use tab to complete because here you just do it and there's it's already escaped for you. You don't have to worry about all these extra keystrokes and it just works. So super important. Over the course of our careers, we will type billions of keystrokes billions and billions of keystrokes uh that's <laughs> billions and billions it's called a sagan by the way um but uh billions and billions of keystrokes and um it, it you got to save your hands man you got to save your wrists uh carpal tunnel is a real thing and the more shortcuts that you can have uh the better so tab is your friend all right let's get out of bandit 2 and at three, paste in the password, take a look around. There's a thing in, in here. So CD is change directory. I think we're all fairly aware of that. Look in here. Huh. So what we were supposed to do, being the Linux noobs that we are, is just type LS and then be like, ah, oh, there's nothing here. But if you notice, whenever I run LS, I always by muscle memory do minus AL. And some people have this alias to like LSA or LS, um, LSL or something like that. Um, but just muscle memory, whenever I type LS, I always do AL because that's what I do. And I always want to know everything that's in the directory. So if you notice, when we do LS, uh, we don't see anything. When we do LS minus AL, we see a bunch of things in here um, that start with dots. Okay, we have the, the normal dots, the dot dot, which are pretty much everywhere, and then we've got these other special files called like bash logout, bash rc, bash uh, dot profile. Um, the dot means, kind of means that it's hidden. Uh, it means that it will not be returned in um, a normal ls command. And so a lot of people accept that as a hidden definition. Uh, being that we are into security uh, as a profession, do not ever uh, assume that dot files are hidden because they're not. All it does is it takes an extra command flag to show these dot files. Um, the only thing that the dot is doing is not if you don't want them there, you can not clutter up your return by excluding the minus a. Um, that's that's all it's really doing for us. Uh, it doesn't prevent us from accessing it. It doesn't prevent us from seeing it in any way. Uh, if we want to see it, um, we don't have to do any special hacky stuff to to get it shown. It's literally just an extra command flag. So we look, we're like, oh no, there's no files in here. Um, but being awesome Linux admins, we know uh, minus al or minus a really l just gives it to us in this format, this uh, listed format, and it gives us all the permissions and everything. Um, a is what's showing the hidden. So if we do ls minus l. We get nothing there, but ls minus a, we see the stuff, minus al, we see everything and the list format. So, like I said, it's not hidden, it's not a big deal. Uh, we can cat it like normal, just put the dot in front of it. It's just part of the file name. So, we will move on to bandit4. Alright, we'll go into in here going on here ooh okay now we've got some weird stuff going on everything is the same length uh, they're 
titled relatively the same. Let's check out what Bannet four to five says. Um, the password for the next level is stored in the only human readable file in the in here directory. So what does that mean? Um, we can, um, <coughs> we can write a short, you know, bash one liner if we want, that'll just go through and try and read each one of these and see if it's readable. Um, we can use a command called file, uh, which will tell us, excuse me. Oh, um, which will tell us what type of a file something is. This is data, uh, data. Um, so probably just binary stuff. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, so it's just like weird binary stuff. Um, so if you remember, way back when, in the a couple levels ago, all of these have dots or dashes in front of them. So we, you know, it's easier for us to just call the explicit path when we run it. <clears throat> so uh, we can, can we just do file? Hmm. No. Uh, what if we did? Star. So that worked, right? So what this is saying is what asterisk does for those of you who don't know is it's a <clears throat> excuse me, um, it's a wild card. It says anything that matches, like it, it can be any character, uh, any number of characters, etc. So the way that typically works is that um, it's we put that at the end of something, and we wanted to just. Um, if we wanted to just catch everything, so let's back up to where there aren't dashes everywhere. Um, if we wanted to just do everything, we could just do this. And that's a directory. <clears throat> There's nothing else in this directory. Um, and if you'll notice, actually, that's a good point. So file did not get uh, dot directory or dot files by default. So if we look, there are dot files in here. So if we did file dot star, this has a different context in, in regex, but what this means just in bash is that file any or um, any file that starts with a dot and then anything that comes after. So that would match this, it would match this, it would match this because they all start with dots. It would not match in here. So if we oops. so then it goes through and it does every single one that starts with a dot. This is a directory, this is a directory, these are all ASCII texts. Um, you can do the same thing with cat. So cat will just like output every file uh, that you asked it to. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Um, so if we go back to in here, we did the file dot slash dash star. That does everything because of the, we have to do the dot slash dash because of the dashes here. If they didn't have dashes, we could have just done star. Another thing we can do is um, just to kind of give you just a quick hint of, of bash scripting, um, we could do a, a script to do it as well. And so if we did four, uh, and what a for loop is, do this a certain number of times. It's often um, used for iterating over certain things, which I'll show you in a sec. Uh, and then this is. Um, this is uh um i want you this is i want you to take the output of this command and iterate over it so uh excuse me yeah so for i in and then in all of the files that return from ls do which is part of the syntax for uh the for loop um, do, and then we can just say cat. We just want to um, read out every single one and we might get some gibberish. We might not, it's the not gibberish that we want, right? So in here, uh, and then dollar sign I, this is how you call a variable. Here we're assigning the variable. So um, let me finish this out. And then, okay, so the, let's break this down. So this is saying for 
whatever interval for whatever in ls. So we ls, we see all of these things. So when this runs through, the first time this runs, it's going i is going to be set to this. And then so it's going to cat um, in our home directory in here, and then whatever i is set to, which will be this. And then it'll echo a new line, and then it'll go back to the beginning, and it'll say, okay, what is i set to now? i is set to file 01. And then it'll do cat in here, uh, and then i is set to file 01, so it'll cat file 01, uh, and so on. So if we go back to here, and we run it, we get a bunch of gobbledygook stuff. Uh, we get a string that we are expecting, and then a bunch more gobbledygook. I guess my music stopped because my headphone just turned off for reasons. Sorry about that. Um, that's the way my headphones work because, you know, cool. But anyways, uh, so this is the string that we're expecting. All of the rest of this is not human readable. This, I would, this is a advanced thing to do, but it's really kind of overkill here and it's, and it's, um, sort of ham-fisting it for this particular problem. I just kind of wanted to give you guys a quick introduction on how uh, some bash scripting might work uh, for uh, more advanced stuff. Uh, but really, this is a, a much more efficient way of doing things. It's much less typing. Uh, it gives it to us. It's very obvious what, uh, what the one we want is. And then once we get this result, we can um, file 0, 07. And there's our answer. Cool. Let's get.